Earlier this morning, um, Ravens running back, well, now former Ravens running back, Mike Davis, he tweeted out, appreciate you, Baltimore. And I think a lot of us, we pretty much saw the writing on the wall at that point. Um, and we just figured that, like, it was going to be bad news for Mike Davis. Because players, they don't just tweet stuff like that for no reason. A lot of them, they will try to say it without saying exactly what it is to sort of try to give people the heads up. Um, while they're on their way out um, And then Adam Schefter He confirmed it um, That the Ravens are releasing Running back Mike Davis uh, And they're releasing him in favor of J.K. Dobbins being activated to the roster uh, So we should expect to see him Pretty soon Pretty soon um, Now with Mike Davis uh, Like we talked about it all if, if you have been here Especially since that Dolphins game The Ravens and Dolphins game We talked about it ever since then like, they tried to run Mike Davis a couple of times in that Dolphins game, and it just it didn't result in anything. And that was the Ravens' last straw. That was their breaking point for running the ball with Mike Davis. It's like they, after that, they never tried to run with him again. Um, they just stopped. They were done. And something else that we have continuously said on here a lot, um, especially, like, during the live streams, during the games, whenever Mike Davis is lined up in the backfield, you know it's, it's either going to be a play – well, it's going to be a passing play either way. But it's either going to be a play action or just or no play action. It's going to be a passing play because you know they're not going to hand the ball off to Mike Davis. Every time he was lined up in the backfield for the Ravens, it was a dead giveaway. And I feel like that's something, if that's something that we picked up on from a long time ago, I know other defensive coordinators and stuff, they have to have picked up on that from a long time ago. Um, but anyway, so his, his release it was kind of a shock, but then when you really think about it, it wasn't really that shocking. Um, him being signed in the first place, uh, I think him being signed was just a security blanket for Gus Edwards, um, for them to just really try to get another bruising type of running back um, to, to sort of take the role of Gus Edwards until Gus Edwards was fully healthy because they knew it was going to be a while. Um, and you know what's crazy? I really thought... Contrary to what a lot of people were saying, but I really thought in the preseason that Mike Davis actually looked good. I saw a lot of people say, oh, no, he didn't look good. He doesn't look good. He lost a step. Da, 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 da. But I actually thought in the preseason that he looked good. Now, in the regular season, it was a bit, yeah, but in the preseason, he had looked good to me. Um, but he just could never get it going uh, for the Baltimore Ravens. And now um, with J.K. being back, them still having Drake, them having Gus Edwards as well, um, they got obviously their top two guys and Drake he he has been a nice running back for the Ravens for the most part as well um when he's gotten his opportunities and now like what now the thing that I worry about um because the Ravens the Ravens got their guys they got their top two guys and they got the guy who has been their other top guy um and then they still got Justice Hill too so now I'm a little worried because we've seen this story before when J.K. has been back, when Gus has been back, and they've had another running back, how they try to divvy up the carries. They don't go with the hot hand, and they try to keep everybody happy. I wonder, especially with it being at this point in the season, if they're going to really try to keep everybody happy or they're really going to not only establish but roll with the hot hand. Of course, you want complimentary backs to help out and whatnot. Uh, if one running back gets going, you want another change of pace back and whatnot to fill in for him at times. But you got to go with whoever the hot hand is. Don't just be trying to feed everybody just because they're there. Go with the hot hand. But we'll see how these Baltimore Ravens do moving forward. But while I got you here, are you interested in a couple of questions from subs? Yeah, this feels like a dream. Team Keep It Clean, I guess this is sort of transitioning into a bonus episode of Question from Subs. We still got one more episode to drop, whether it be later on tonight or early tomorrow morning, um, that we already did. But I figured, you know what? Let's just go ahead and get some of these more questions done. So, first question on this bonus episode came from my guy, Marco. And appreciate you being a Team Keep It Clean patron. 
He said, what's good, Engraving? Been a while since I asked a question. Yeah, it has been, ever since October 16th. So yeah, <laughs> it's been a minute. But anyway, he said Derek Wolf recently shared some light on the Raven strength and conditioning coach, uh, Steve Saunders. Something most of us knew, major injury after injury, players not healing in time. Do you think it's a bad look that Harbaugh still has Saunders on the staff, knowing all this information is out? And do you think Lamar should just sit out knowing this training staff can't be trusted? Um, for Steve Saunders, I mean, that whole, I remember the COVID thing a couple years ago when they said... Uh, that Steve Saunders was the one walking around with no mask on and he was one transmitting COVID to all the players and stuff. Like that right there, That if that's true, that should have been a red flag. That should have been like, oh man, like we, we can't have that. We can't afford that. That's terrible. Da, 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 da. Um, but Steve Saunders, I mean, yeah, with, with all the injuries and stuff, is it just him or is it a lot deeper than just a Steve Saunders? Um, is it the way that the Ravens operate in the offseason? I know Derek Wolf. He he talked about more than that. He talked about that like uh, when he was on uh, Brandon Perna, Brandon Perna. I, f- I forget how to say his last name, but he he's a Broncos fan, big YouTuber, Broncos fan. But when Derek Wolf was on his channel, he talked about it. He talked about the way that the Ravens train in the offseason. He said that, he said there's something like that. They only train for like the first to be really good in the first month of the season or something like that. And I was like, Oof, well, <laughs> I don't know, but um. Yeah, injuries have certainly been an issue. And um, Ravens seem to have been, they, this year they said that they did some stuff differently, which is good. Um, they brought in Adrian Dixon from the Titans to help people come back and come back the right way. Uh, it's been up and down with that. Um, so, I don't know, man. I, I just I just feel like, I guess that, that may really be a part of the philosophy. I guess when, when, we, when we talk philosophy, most of the time we just talk about the way that the team is constructed, the way that they run team, offense, defense, special teams, da 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 But part of that would be um, these injuries too. So I, I really think – I can't call exactly what it is, if it's just Steve Saunders or not, but that is something that the Ravens need to continue to – because, they, again, they said they addressed it this offseason. They looked into it. They said that they're going to turn over every stone this past offseason, but I think it's important that they turn over every stone, every nook and cranny, and every crevice of that training. Next question came from Amari, another team. Keep it clean, patient. Said, Angry Raven, just wanted to check in with you and let you know what I've noticed watching the last game. Lamar and Tyler Huntley have been running for their life, but it seems as if the route combos that were run for Lamar were mainly deep route combos that is causing him to have to wait for more people to get open. Yes. Uh, this O line needs help as as and as Lamar fan or and as a Lamar fan, he needs to leave and continue his legacy in a spread offense with a better offensive line. I'll tell you what, the, with the offensive line with the Ravens, it's like they they're good, but they're like again, I, I still feel like a lot of times they just get overrated a bit because like again, you have people like Lamar, you have people like Tyler Huntley, they can make some defenders miss, especially Lamar because he's been the starter, so he's been having to be behind that O line for longer. So um, a lot of the O-line, like their stats and numbers and stuff, they get elevated because you got a quarterback like that. Um, and, again, the O-line, they, they've been rough at times. They've been good sometimes too now, but they've been rough a lot of times too. And, um, again, I just, I just think sometimes they get a little bit overrated. Um, and as far as the, the, the long, deep development play, yeah, we, we, we know. And it's uh, – we just got to wait and see. Hopefully something changes when Lamar comes back, but – I don't really think it will. Next question came from another patron, my guy Gareth. He said, hey, Graven, hope you're okay. My question, do you think with Lamar out for three to five weeks? Whoa, <laughs> whoa, I think it's supposed to be one to three weeks, but we'll see. Uh, he said, do you have confidence that Snoop can get us to the playoffs? Uh, don't get me wrong, I'm rooting for him so much. Oh, yeah, like we all are. Uh, but what do you think? I would love your input, and how's Pookie doing? Uh, oh, yeah, she's doing really good. Uh, as a while back, I had to put my dog down. It's getting better each day. P.S. Can I give Baker Mayfield some love with a game he had on Thursday night? I'm glad he's in the right place. Keep being great and graven. Love you, bro. No, we are not great at all. You're great. Y'all are great. Team Keep It Clean is great. We are not great at all, though. But um, Pookie's great uh, with Baker Mayfield. Great, great game, great finish, great game winning drive. But let's pump the brakes. <laughs> we got to pump the brakes on Baker Mayfield because, again, we remember what we saw in Cleveland. We, we remember. We ain't forget. We seen it with the Panthers, too. We ain't forget. But we'll see what happens with Baker Mayfield, though. Uh, but as far as Snoop, um, do I have confidence that he can get us to the playoffs? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I just really don't know. Um, I'm kind of up in the air. I'm obviously hoping for the best. I hope Snoop goes out there and balls out, man. I hope he does his thing. I hope he even, like, Get maybe might get an opportunity with somebody else. Yes, be a starter. Um, but I just um I just don't know right now. Now, um, like 
I talk, I told y'all one of my guys. Um, he he. I talked to him a couple days ago, and he was talking about how well the difference between last year's Snoop versus this year's Snoop got a much healthier team, uh, especially on defense. Well, really on offense too, but it's a much healthier team than it was last year. So, oh, that's that's a good point. Um, so we'll see, we'll see. Uh, we all rocking with Snoop, hoping the best for him, and hoping that he just goes in there and kills it. <laughs> Next question will really comment came from my guy Kevin B. He said, just three words right now. Let's go, Baker. Take with that what you will. Next question came from my boy Two Wayne. He said, What's up, engraving? It's your boy Two Wayne from Twitter. We had to talk about the change of philosophy. And I was thinking, uh, I was thinking if you wondered why we value the tight end the most on this team, it's because of Ozzy Newsom. Oh, well, Ozzie Newsom was a tight end, a Hall of Fame tight end, and a Hall of Fame GM. He looked double double. But anyway. It says, since he played that position, I feel like he'll treat that more than others. I might be wrong, but I could be right on what Bama said on Get Rich on Die Trying. Uh, what you think? Oh, my goodness. Um, yeah, that's, then that's part of Ravens' philosophy, man. That's part of it. Ozzy's a big part of that, obviously, because uh, he helped start this whole thing. I just think, I, I just think it starts from the top. Well, Steve Bashotti, Ozzy was obviously the previous GM, and they had a way that they liked to do things, which they did. Uh, and now Eric DaCosta, he has a way that he'd like to do things. Now, he has a lot of things that he does different from Ozzie Newsom, but he also has a lot of things that he does similar to Ozzie Newsom because, I mean, he learned under Ozzie Newsom, so that's what you should expect. Um, and then, of course, it goes to John Harbaugh then and everybody else under that. So, yeah, it's just a complete philosophy thing, the, the emphasis that's put on the tight ends in the, in, in the, uh, on the offense, of course, with Ozzie having been one. So that's a really good point that you make. Honest answer. Next question came from my boy Elix. He said, hey, Graven, how's your family and how you doing? Hey, we're doing really, really good. I, I really appreciate you asking about that. He said, I got a question that I need your thought process and real answer to. I just got done watching the Raw Room, Darren Bates, the former linebacker of the Titans. He was talking about the Titans' former GM, uh, John Robinson, and what led to his firing. My question to you is that with our GM, Eric DeCosta, and his staff not providing a team with a competent head coach that does not put his people on <laughs> what give Lamar Jackson the offensive coordinator that can call plays and could stick with what's working and not drift off to his imaginary playbook that that's not there given Lamar adequate weapons for the past game to be successful in the regular season and the postseason too do you ever think Bashadi will step in and fire everyone including the straightening staff too no I don't um no well at least at least not right now the only way that I could see like Bashadi like cleaning house um is maybe if if Lamar leaves and hopefully he doesn't but if Lamar leaves um and it's like two years after Lamar leaves and the Ravens were just if if they were doing just really really bad in that scenario then I think that he would think about it and possibly do something but Right now, no. Say, for instance, worst case scenario, even in this season, if the Ravens, say, for instance, the Ravens ain't even make the playoffs. I don't think anybody would be fired at all. I don't. I don't think anybody would be fired. Uh, even if Lamar comes back healthy and the Ravens miss the playoffs, I don't think anybody would be fired at all. Don't. Um, so I, I just think, yeah, that, that's the only way I think like pressure will really be put on them because if Lamar leaves... Um, then there will be more eyes on Hubble. Um, so, yeah, I, that's the only way I think anything would even be close to, to changing. And the last question on this bonus episode of Questions from Subs came from my guy Luffy. He said, read between the lines. What's up, Ingraven? I already sent a question, but I've been noticing something with these Ravens since the Broncos games. The Ravens are preparing for Lamar to leave, which means they never planned on paying him or was just waiting for him to get hurt, period. They are pushing Tyler Huntley and Roquan Smith as the face of their team now, and you can see it in the way they talk about them and present them in the media. Sad case. Huh. Um, I have seen some stuff. I, I can't say they pushing Tyler Huntley as the face of the Ravens. I mean, he's their starting quarterback right now. I, 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 I kind of see some stuff that you're saying, but at the same time, um, with him being a starter, I just think it's just that. Um, we're trying to, they're trying to like hype him up a bit, give him a boost of confidence. I, I can't say they're trying to make him the face of the team right now. Um, but I have seen the way like some people talk about him versus how they speak about Lamar. You can see some stuff here and there, but we'll see. And as far as Roquan, I mean, that, that's, that's their big acquisition on defense midseason. Um, and he's been playing good, so they're definitely going to push him. Um, but I, I don't think it's like this like this, but we'll see. But anyway, he said, I just had to say this just in case anyone else didn't notice. I feel like this should be a talking point and get more eyes to watch out for it. Uh, yeah, it's always something to look for um, because media um, – 
they can really uh they really try to be tapped in with the fans and they have a big impression on the fans and fans thinking process and like PR is big they like that it's a business it, it is a it's a business but anyway uh, he said also wanted to add I'll always support the channel because you're the one doing it in the back of my head I don't want to see the Ravens have any success without Lamar which is petty but from the bottom of my heart I can't help but support you for introducing me to this type of content uh, you're a pioneer whether you think so or not uh, much love and like Jiro isn't <laughs> I'm out <laughs> I appreciate you, Luffy. I, I appreciate you. That was a uh, interesting way to end things off, man. But I, I appreciate you, and I appreciate all of y'all for watching this. Um, thank you for watching this bonus episode. Like I said, we have one more episode, a question from Sub. That's already done. It's already done. Uh, so we will be dropping that uh, either later tonight or, or probably early tomorrow morning. So y'all stay on the lookout for that, and I will see you all. The next time I see you all will be in question from subs, but it's already done. So, but I see you all there. But uh, after that, I will see you all for the live stream for the Pittsburgh Steelers game. We out. Yeah, this feels like a dream.